topic, Listen, God is Speaking. And the text comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. And it reads, Incline your ear and come on to me. Hear and your soul shall live. So God is commanded even in the Old Testament when the Spirit of God was not on many people, just on one or two people at the most. God is saying to his people, incline your ear, prick it up. And come on to me here and your soul shall live. Because whatever God says is for your blessing. And every time I recap, I always say that we need to hear from God because it is the only way we can live righteously, peaceably, prosper, and have wisdom. Because whenever you listen to the voice of God and obey, you don't ever make mistakes. And I remember, um, I think it was Monday, um, my friend was getting ready to go out. And I said to her, well, why didn't you tell me you're leaving home? Because I need a right to, do, to run an errand. And the Lord said to me, he says, call and see if they're open. And when I called, they're Jewish people. They were closed Monday and Tuesday. You see, I listened. When he spoke, I listened. Because I was just about to rush and put on clothes and get out of the house. But because I obeyed God, I didn't leave home for nothing. I was able to do other things. So when you listen to the voice of God, and when you are listening for the voice of God, as you're going about your business, when he speaks, you will hear and you will do whatever God tells you to do. I said last week that peace is a voice of God that we have. When you're, when you're in the midst of chaos, when you're going through trouble, when you get bad news, when the doctors say the cholesterol is too high, all of those things, and you know, they, they speak words to make you think you're going to die overnight if you don't lose 510 pounds, you know, in 20 minutes, and you just have that peace in your heart that everything is all right. Peace is the voice of God. And so you must pay attention to the peace of God that you have in adversity because that is God's way of saying to you, I have your back. I've already provided. I've solved the problem. The perplexity is only in your mind, but it's going to be okay. And when you have peace and people try to talk you out of your peace, you need to cut them off. Because people who live in the sense knowledge realm would tell you that you are in denial. Because they don't understand what it's like to have peace, that blessed assurance that everything is going to be okay. Your mother's in a coma, but you have peace. The doctors are saying things don't look good, but you have peace. Because Jesus doeth all things well. Amen? You, you, you get a summons to go to court and you haven't done anything wrong and they're coming with their big lawyers uh, but you've got peace uh, because God will give you an opportunity to speak and when you speak, he's going to fill your mouth with words and wisdom to confound the wise. So peace is a voice of God that most believers don't recognize most of the time. I also said that he speaks in a still small voice, a very gentle whisper that if you're not paying attention, you can miss it. But when your ears are pricked and inclined, have you ever looked look, look at dogs? Sometimes you just see their ears shoot up. It's because they're hearing something in their dog world. And, and so they, they're investigating it is there. And then sometimes you see the dog just take off in a mad dash because it hurt something. They either heard by hearing or heard by smelling. But it heard something that caused it to do that. And so we must be so sensitive and live in the spirit. For we are sons of God. And even though we are in a physical world, we must live in the spirit that we can hear that gentle whisper when God speaks. I also said another way in which God speaks is that he commands the heart. You don't hear a voice. You don't hear peace. But this thing is just on the inside of you to do. Sometimes God would command your heart to do something for the church or for somebody. Whatever it is, he commands the heart like he did to the widow woman. 
She had made up in her mind, this is the last meal. My son and I are going to eat and then we are going to die because there's a famine in the land. But God had commanded the heart. And so when the prophet got to where she would be picking up steaks, he said to her, cook me something. And because she leave to do what God commanded her heart to do, then the word of the Lord came, the meal and the oil is not going to dry up. But it would last, Jesus told us, it lasted three and a half years. I would like to go to the supermarket and shop like that. You do a one-time grocery shopping, all your fruits and vegetables, and then they tell you 45622, and you just go and put it in the cupboard. And every time you use a can of milk, you go about, there's another one. I would love that to happen. It's not impossible, but God does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Amen? Amen. Another way in which God leads is in leadings. He leads us through the Holy Spirit uh, or, or directs us to do something through the Holy Spirit. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to lead us in this life. That is why we must be submissive and not rebellious. In addition to communicating a direct command to you, the Holy Spirit will give you leadings on what to do and what not to do. Remember the Bible tells us that Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So the Holy Spirit would literally lead us to do something or direct us to do something or not to do something. The leading of the Holy Spirit can be so gentle. You know, like sometimes you say, well, let me take John Street. And as you're coming down to turn on John Street, you just get a lead and let me go down Nassau Street. God does that. He leads us, David tells us, that he leads us in paths of righteousness. And so God will lead us, which is a gentle nudge or strong prompting to move in a specific direction or to make a certain decision. And I find that sometimes the Lord just like that would, would just lead me to call someone. I have no reason for calling, nothing to say. This person is not even my friend like that to call. Especially when I get a lead in to call a pastor. It's like, what am I going to say? I, I don't want him to think that I'm calling to ask for, you know, an invitation to preach that kind of stuff. And I don't feel prophetic. I don't feel no anointing on me. I just feel like a natural human being. And I will just go, Pastor, how are you? How is church? And he may say something. And then I find myself saying a whole lot of stuff pertaining to what he needs to hear and what, what he needs to do. And then you hear that person saying, you don't know it, but I've been praying to the Lord. And saying to the Lord, Lord, what should I do? Well, why is this happening? And here you are. And I still don't know what I've said. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm just speaking everyday English conversation. If I say, well, you know, God says the word of the Lord says he's good. Well, that's true. But I don't know what that means to you when I say it based on what you were saying to the Lord. So that's one way in which God leads us. Sometimes he leads us to befriend a person. Sometimes you'll be sitting down and then all of a sudden you're led to the restroom. And somebody is there. And if you're a friendly person, you say hi. And you realize the person seemed down. And you start to talk to the individual. That's the leading. He leads us. Everything Jesus did, he was led to do. He was led to go to Samaria because he had to meet that woman at the well. Every city he went to, he was led. And so when, when you are totally surrendered to the Lord and you want to be used by God, he will lead you you you've made the decision i'm going to stay home tomorrow and rest myself and you get up and you are led to go to 34th street and you're like for what 
But this thing is just on the inside of you, and you don't realize that it's a spirit leading you to 34th Street. You go down there, and then there's this chance encounter, and now you realize this is the reason why I have to come. And so sometimes because the Lord doesn't um, tell us verbally, some people miss an opportunity either to be used by God or to receive a blessing because they're trying to figure out why do I feel to do this or why do I feel to do that. But one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit um, communicates to us is through leadings. He's just leading you. That is his job, to lead you to where you shall go, to lead you to make certain decisions. Um, Like you, you could be minding your own business and the Lord could say something to you like, you need to go get your birth certificate. I said, well, I don't need my birth certificate. I have my New York ID. But he's telling you, leading you, go get that birth certificate. Go and apply for such and such because he knows what is coming up and why you would need it. And then when you get it, you says, that's why the Lord led me to do that. That's why the Lord led me, you know, that kind of stuff, because that is what he does. He leads. And, and, and as believers, we are to live by faith. You can't serve God without faith. And so when you get that leading, you've got to trust the spirit of the living God. When God tells you to send out an application, just send it out. You might have sent it out three years ago, but God knows when the individual is going to file 13 and pull out that application and call you. So he leads us, and we have to be very, very aware as to when the Holy Spirit is leading us. I, I remember the person who, who's responsible for me being at this ministry today because when he was called and told, you need to come and hear this evangelist, he said, I don't want to hear no evangelist. I hear evangelists all the time. And the lady said, this one is different. You need to come and hear this evangelist. And so when he finally came and he heard me, he decided that he needed to get me an opportunity to speak in this church. You see, he was led to come, even though he didn't want to come. And then when he came, he was led to mention my name because nobody here knew me. I didn't even know this church was in existence. And now 12 years later, I've been in here. 12 years every Wednesday because of the leading. God was leading. God was leading. And I didn't know that. Another way in which God speaks is he gives us a check in our spirit. When the Lord does not want us to encounter disaster, tragedy, or failure of any kind, he gives us a check in our spirit. And that check in your spirit is like a stop sign being put up by the Holy Spirit. It is his way of telling you to stop right where you are and not to proceed any further. And most of the times, we get checks in our spirits when we are about to sign a contract. Do I have an amen? As soon as they say to you, just sign here. It's one thing to be talking about it. It's another thing to receive the application, the form, whatever. But as soon as the person who's trying to beguile you says, sign here, you get this check in your spirit. And when you get that check, that is God saying, no, don't do that. Don't proceed any further. Trouble is going to come out of this, especially when they say, oh, this is a good deal. You're not going to get this tomorrow when you come. And the Holy Spirit going, beep, beep, beep. Don't sign. That's a check. He does not want you to do that. That is a stop sign. Because when you sign it, all the ghosts and goblins now come out. You are not going to be able to speak to that person that you spoke with on the phone. 
I remember being in South Carolina and this guy called me and he told me how cheap I could get, you know, phone service and stuff like that. I said, where are you calling from? He said, Chicago. I said, what is your name? He said, Ronnie. I said, Ronnie, when I sign this with you and then tomorrow what you tell me is not what it is, I will not find you. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to the mall and spend my money. He said, my gosh, you are hard not to crack. Because you can't find them afterwards. And then you're going to find somebody now that's going to tell you the real deal for the contract. So when God gives you that check in your spirit, don't lend that money. Don't sign that check. Don't get involved in that um, conversation. Don't bring that person into your company. Don't let them sleep over. Don't lend out this. That is the voice of the Lord speaking to you. And you must hear and hearken to the voice of God. In addition to the Holy Spirit telling us to go in a certain direction, he also does the opposite. He tells us not to move in a particular direction, especially if there's going to be any kind of danger right around the corner. He told Jeremiah, he says, listen, don't go that way. Your brethren from Anathoth is waiting to beat you up. And sometimes when the Lord says to you, leave for him earlier or later, that is something you need to do. Because he, he's giving you that check. He's letting you know that it is not going to be all right. Sometimes if he says to you, don't go today, go tomorrow, trust that check that you are getting in your spirit. So God will give you a check to do something. And he will give you a check not to do something. He will give you a check to go somewhere. And he would also give you a check not to go somewhere. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 7 tells us that when Paul and his traveling companions had gone to Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they came to Mysia, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. Well, why would the Holy Spirit stop Paul from preaching the word when the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that none would perish. You see, that was not the time to take the gospel in those two regions. They were not ready for it yet. And so it is very important that we move by the Spirit's moving. Because you can move too early and miss it. You can move too late and miss it. There's always a right time to do things. And so when you want to do good and you get a check. Ha have the Lord ever given you a, a, a word or insight into a person's situation? And, and you want to tell them, but... Every time you go, you get it. Because now is not the time. You have to wait till the fallow ground of that person's heart is broken up. When that person is more receptive and willing to hear what God has to say. And once that happens, then God gives you the release to tell that person what you wanted to tell them six months ago. Prophetic words don't spoil. And one of the reasons why some people make a havoc of things is because they feel that I get it now and I must release it now. But when God tells you something, you need to wait to know when to do it. And so once you wait, the word will be well received. Or even if the person rejects it, at least you did it at the appointed time that God told you to do it. So you must follow the check that you get in your spirit. You know, one of the things that Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer is, um, deliver us from evil. And when I was exegeting the Lord's Prayer, what, what, what um, one commentator talked about, you can get evil gifts. Do you know that? You know, somebody can steal something and give it to you. So when Jesus said, deliver us from evil, he's also talking about evil gifts 
an evil advice, an evil company, and living in an evil place. You can leave where you are living to go to cheaper rent, and then you are living in an evil place. And so it is very important when you get a check in your spirit. Somebody comes and they say, I want to bless you with these Gucci shoes. And you get the check. You say, you know what? Could you just hold on to them a while longer? I, I need just to check in with the Lord, you know, about something. So you really have to be careful because sometimes evil comes in gift wrap paper. Evil come in a bottle of Jador. Are you hearing me? Evil comes uh, in a real great microwave. Uh, evil comes uh, in a washing machine. And so when you get that check in your spirit, pay attention. Don't be moved by, by, by the, the expense or, or how costly the gift is. Don't be moved by what the person would say. If you say no, you have the right to obey God first and foremost. Amen? So there's a check. Another way in which God speaks is through the quickening of the Holy Spirit. This happens, um, when this happens, this is, the way, this is the Holy Spirit's way of bringing you knowledge he may want you to have on something specific. A quickening from the Holy Spirit is when he will cause something to jump out at you or make it alive in you or cause it to come alive in you. For instance, if you are reading the Bible, you may find a verse or a chapter that will jump off the page at you. Whenever the Holy Spirit quickens something to you, this means that you are to take hold of it and examine it to see exactly what is the message the Holy Spirit is trying to convey to you. I'm going to say it again. Whenever the Holy Spirit quickens something to you, this means that you are to take hold of it and examine it to see exactly what is the message he is trying to convey to you. Let's suppose you were reading the Old Testament. And as you are reading, this, this scripture comes to you where the Lord said to the children of Israel at Kardash Barnea, you've been here long enough. It just jump out at you. It's a quickening. It quickens. It comes alive on the inside of you. You've read it before, but now all of a sudden, you've been here long enough. What here is God talking about? Is he talking about living in this home in these conditions you're living in? Is he talking about in this financial condition you're in, rubbing two pennies together? Is he talking about the job? You are to examine it to find out what God is saying specifically to you being here long enough. Suppose you, you're reading and, and the, the Lord says to you, this is like Mary Bar to me. What is he saying? So you go to the scriptures and you begin to examine what happened at Mary Bar. It was only rock. So God is saying, this, this what you're going through is hard. It's like the rock of Gibraltar to you. It's like a Jericho wall. It's like a, a bed of Red Sea water. And you can't see how you're going to get over it, how you're going to get through it, how things are going to be resolved, how the need is going to be met. But he says, this is like Mary Bar to me. What is he saying? He's saying, I can get a miracle out of this impossible situation. I can get a road through this mountain. I can get a river in this desert. I can get a blessing in the place of a curse. So whenever the Lord quickens you and a scripture comes out, you examine it. I remember a couple months ago, um, I was under demonic attack. And I was reading the Bible. And the Lord gave me 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, and it reads, The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So with all the demonic activity that was coming at me, that quickened it, jumped out in my spirit, every evil work, whatever it is, he's going to deliver me from it. 
Whatever the devil wants to do, whatever he's put in the hearts of men to do, he says, I am going to deliver you from every evil work, not some of it, not a portion of it, <clears throat> not what happened, only happened in January, but every evil work and preserve you, you know, to, to come into my heavenly kingdom. And so when you read the Bible and scripture jumps out at you, examine it, get to know what God is saying to you. Sometimes the words of a preacher may jump out at you. Or you may be driving down the road listening to a song on the radio and a certain line jump out at you. You know, a verse or chorus speaks to you. So whenever you get that quickening, that quickening that comes in your spirit, you must stop and examine it <clears throat> and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you exactly what God is saying to you. And so you can see that God has several ways in which he speaks to us. He's not confined to speaking with an audible voice. But as you are sitting under an anointed, when you are in an anointed church, and the minister is, is, is speaking and preaching, the word is like rain falling on you. And so when you are in an anointed service, God is bound to speak to you in some way. Whether it's a quickening, a checking your spirit, a leading, a still voice, small voice commanding your heart, peace, a thought, whatever it is, God is bound to speak. There is no child of God who does not hear the voice of God on a regular basis. Because he says, my sheep know my voice. And God's purpose for speaking to us is, is because he wants us to succeed. He wants us to do well. And if God doesn't speak, we don't really know what to do. And so because God wants you to know what to do and he wants you to prosper, he will speak. But you have now to come into that mode where you say, I am going to position my spirit. I am going to position my spiritual ears that I will hear God when he speaks at all times. Sometimes you'll be praying for months about things and then all of a sudden you get up in the morning and God begins to give you direction. Get up and do this, make this phone call, send out this email, move. Move when God is moving. Sometimes I have to preach this Sunday and I'm asking God for the message and he's not talking. He's giving me the message for December 31st. Now that doesn't make sense in the natural, right? And he's talking, talking, giving me a whole lot of data for a message I have to preach on the 31st of December. And I'm like, Lord, but this Sunday, this Sunday. So what he's doing now, I have to, I have to trust him by faith. Sometimes you get in the pulpit and you still don't know what you're going to preach. You know, and you have to believe God because he has different ways of putting us in the pulpit. Sometimes you leave with a message and you get there and then all of a sudden you sense a shift and, and it's like he wants to say something and that is why it's important to fill your spirit with the knowledge of God and the word of God that he can go into the reservoir of scripture and knowledge and experience that you have and pull it up so that you can be a blessing to the body of Christ. So God wants each of us to hear his voice to live by his voice because when we do we don't make mistakes amen? amen i need to take a pause say to remind those of you who've been here with us for a long time and those of you who are new that our anniversary service is on sunday the 17th of november at 5 30 p.m usually this time of the year is when we give out envelopes and we ask you to be prayerful and ask the Lord, you know, what you should give as a blessing, you know, for the ministry that we've done so far throughout the year to bless you. And so if you would like to have an envelope, just raise your hand so that I can come through quickly and um, give out um, the, the envelopes. And um, I just want you to know that if it's ever time we needed a blessing, it is now. And I want you to be really, really prayerful um, 
about what you're going to put in the offering so that it will be a tremendous um, blessing for the advancement of the work that we are doing here in the Wall Street Worship Center. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, so pray about it. I know that you belong to other churches. Anyone else still need an envelope? There's still more here. Um, let the Lord really tell you what to give us. Um, and um, you can bring it in by the 17th of November. If you don't have it by then, you can bring it in after the 17th of November. All right? Thank you so much. Stand with me and let us make powerful prayer. Because I'm believing that this church will be a church that hears the voice of God. And because of that, you will be a greater blessing to your church. Don't you want to be? Because when you're positioned to hear and you are of spiritual integrity, God will speak to you for your people and God will speak to you for individuals and God will raise you up as an oracle of his to speak his word in the church and to mankind. Amen. Amen. I never knew that I would grow into this kind of person, but God did it because it demands commitment and dedication. Father, today I thank you that you have declared in your word that your sheep know your voice. I say it by faith, God, because it is not your will for your voice to be unrecognizable to the redeemed. And so, Father, I know by faith that every sheep that was present here and those that are standing, that they know your voice. And I'm praying, God, that whether you quicken, whether you put a check, whether you lead, mighty God, whether you command a heart, a still small voice, whether you put a thought in our minds, that whatever way in which you choose to speak to your sons and daughters, almighty God, that we would hear your voice and we would recognize it when you speak to us. I am believing today, God, that all of the mistakes that we used to make because we used to make decisions out of our own ingenuity and out of our own wisdom that it is over. That now, almighty God, that we have made the decision, uh, I am going to listen for the voice of God. Whether it's his voice that comes in the form of peace. Uh, Father, today I am declaring that we are not an anxious people, that we are not an eager people, we are not a restless people people. We are not doubting people, discouraged people, but we are people who are determined uh, that we are going to wait until our change come. And so I thank you today, God, uh, that you are going to begin to speak to the spirits uh, of your sons and daughters. Uh, you're going to speak in everyday matters, uh, whether it's uh, by the blue dress or the green dress. Uh, you're going to speak in everyday matters, uh, whether to pay all of the bill now uh, or to pay it at the end of the month. Uh, we are going to begin to hear your voice speaking to us uh, in all uh, that pertains to life and godliness. Uh, you're going to tell us where to buy and what to buy. Uh, you're going to tell us what to say and when to say it. Uh, I decree and declare today, God, uh, that we are not novices uh, and that we are not sheep that are scattered uh, without a shepherd. But the good shepherd uh, that has given us the paracletos, the Holy Ghost, uh, who lives on the inside of us, uh, that he's going to lead us in paths of righteousness. Uh, he's going to lead us into prosperity. Uh, he's going to lead us beside still waters. No more are we going to be roaming like nomads, uh, tossed to and fro with uncertainty, uh, not knowing what to do. Uh, but today we surrender to the Lordship uh, and the leading of the spirit of the living God. Uh, lead us, God, where we should be. Uh, lead us, God, hallelujah, in all that pertains to life and godliness. Uh, we want to be spirit-led. Uh, we want to be spirit-driven. Uh, we want to hear the voice of our teacher behind us uh, telling us the way that we should go uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, even under the old covenant, 
King David said, uh, the spirit of the Lord spoke by me. Uh, he heard the voice of God. Uh, how much more so are you the redeemer uh, that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I decree and declare that the, 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 the amount of pain and suffering, the enormity or the regularity uh, of the pain and the regret uh, that we have gone through because of foolish decisions after the fact uh, that it is over because we're now going to be led by the Spirit. Uh, we're now going to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Uh, we're now going to wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. I praise your name, Almighty God, uh, and I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Uh, mighty God, I thank you uh, that we are not sheep without a shepherd, uh, but the good shepherd uh, is seeing to it uh, that we make the right decisions. Uh, whatever you are going through on your job, uh, trust the Holy Ghost to tell you what to do. Uh, the perplexity is only your, in your mind, uh, but the God you serve uh, is a miracle worker and a problem solver. Uh, whatever is going on in the church uh, that irritates you, uh, it is a house of God. Uh, and as Jesus walked into the temple uh, and he cast out the chaos, uh, he will drive it out of your church. Uh, just trust God and keep praying. Uh, the order will return to the house of God. Uh, whatever is going on in your own home uh, and among your family, uh, he has given to us the ministry uh, of reconciliation. Uh, we are trusting God today uh, that as he speaks to us uh, and as he instructs us, uh, we will indeed obey the voice of God. Uh, Father, our ears are inclined and our spirits are anointed and we will do all that you have called us to do in the name of Jesus. Every spirit and every life in here, there is a new anointing upon you. There is a different anointing upon you. There is a prophetic anointing upon you. There's a serious anointing upon you. You will hear by the spirit. You will see by the spirit. You will discern by the spirit. You will know by the spirit. And you will speak by the spirit uh, in times and in season. Uh, there is none spiritually blind among us. Uh, are you hearing me today by the Holy Ghost? Uh, we have no blind believers uh, under this anointing in the name of Jesus. Uh, we have no deaf believers. Uh, we hear in the name of Jesus. Uh, we have no ignorant uh, or unenlightened believers. Uh, we are discerning and perceiving uh, by the spirits. Uh, we are discerning spirits of men uh, and spirits of demons uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, our mouths are anointed uh, to speak back to the enemy. Uh, when we discern and recognize uh, we open our mouths uh, and with the two-edged sword of the spirit uh, we declare the word of the Lord uh, against every demonic attack uh, and against the edicts uh, of men and women uh, that are oppressive uh, and diabolical uh, and demonically inspired uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are a prophetic people. Uh, we are like the sons of Issachar. We are discerning uh, of seasons and times. Uh, and if God says uh, you've been here long enough, uh, there's no man can keep you where God says uh, to rise. Uh, and move forward. Uh, he said to Moses, tell the people to advance uh, and move out uh, because you've been here long enough. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we are prophetic people. Uh, we are people of discernment. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we speak to every rock uh, that stands before us uh, and we command the goodness of God uh, to flow towards us. Uh, we stretch forth uh, the rod of the word of God uh, against uh, every wall of water that stands before us uh, and it shall divide. Uh, we raise a hallelujah around every Jericho wall uh, and it shall come down. In the name of Jesus, it shall come down. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are the anointing 
that destroys every yoke and every yoke, every plague, every curse, every burden, every generational curse that wants to follow you and destroy your health and your prosperity, every generational curse uh, or the words and the wickedness uh, of even men and women uh, that want to tie up your blessing uh, and tie you down in a dungeon, uh, the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords, uh, he calls you out of Lordy Bar as David brought Mephibosheth uh, out of Lordy Bar. I command you to come out of every holding bear, every demonic prison, every demonic cell, every demonic captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command Zion, I command the Redeemer to come forth. Walk into your new season. Uh, walk into your blessing. For the power of God uh, is present to heal. Uh, the spirit uh, of the most high God uh, is upon you. Come on and receive your anointing. Come on and receive your deliverance. Uh, come on receive your prophetic mantle. In the name of Jesus. Uh, receive your healing. Uh, receive your day. Uh, the night is past. Uh, and the day is come. Uh, you are not weak but you are strong. In the name of Jesus, uh, for the Lord thy God uh, in the midst of thee is mighty. Uh, I decree the decree of the Lord uh, over your life. Uh, I call you healed. Uh, I call you blessed. Uh, I call you delivered. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, no weapon, uh, no weapon, uh, no plot and plan, uh, no conspiracy uh, of the kingdom of darkness, uh, no law and government. That does not agree uh, with what God has said for you uh, will take precedence, uh, will come to pass in your life. Uh, but the word of the Lord uh, that is forever settled in heaven, uh, that the zeal of the Lord uh, will bring to pass, uh, it shall come forth uh, and come to fruition uh, in your behalf. We are prophetic people. We are prophetic people. You've been here long enough. Uh, you've been here long enough. Uh, God has taken us from rags to riches. Uh, he's taken us from the projects uh, to a good neighborhood. Uh, he's taken us from Suzuki uh, to Lexus or whatever other car they have out there. I don't know them like that. Hallelujah. He's taken you from one bedroom to three in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's taken you from the ordinary uh, to the extraordinary uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he is crowning you today uh, with glory uh, and with loving kindness. Hallelujah. What a God. What a God. Uh, what a God. Uh, we are prophetic people. Uh, we discern seasons and times uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are a prophetic people. Uh, we discern seasons and times. Uh, woman of God, we are prophetic people. Uh, we discern seasons and times uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, for the spirit of the most high God uh, is upon you you uh, and you shall do all that God has called you to do uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it uh, the preference of men uh, the edicts of men uh, the rejection of men uh, shall not prevail against it uh, you are the David uh, out of the sons of Jesse uh, that God has chosen hallelujah and Saul can't do nothing about it uh, the Philistines can't stop it uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, Nabal can't block it, uh, and Joab uh, and Abner, they can't do anything about it. Uh, it will be for you uh, like God said it will be uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, come on and declare, come on and decree and declare in this prophetic anointing that is upon you. Uh, come on uh, and frame your world. Uh, it will be for you like God said it will be uh, your healer. Uh, 
you're delivered. Uh, hallelujah. You have your citizenship. Uh, you're documented. Uh, the insurance company uh, is going to give you a just claim. Uh, the realtor is going to do right by you. Uh, whatever you want to sell is going to be sold uh, for the right price. Uh, according to the will of God, uh, your enemies are now your footstool. Uh, receive. Uh, receive. Uh, receive your victory. Uh, receive your victory. Uh, receive your miracle. Uh, receive your breakthrough. Uh, earlier the spirit of the Lord said uh, there's a breakthrough in this room uh, and it is here for you. Uh, there's a miracle in this sanctuary and it has your name on it. Uh, there's a healing. Uh, a physical healing uh, in this church uh, with your name on it. Uh, the spirit of God uh, is here to heal uh, in the name of Jesus. The healing, the healing, the healing, the healing, healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Uh, it is here for you. Uh, it has your name on it uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this healing in this house. Uh, I give you glory, God. Uh, there's healing. Uh, there's healing in this home, in this house. Uh, it has come for you. Uh, I release to you the healing uh, that God has for your body. Uh, and I decree and declare that it will line up with God's creatorial order. And every cell uh, and organism uh, will respond to the power of God uh, and live again uh, from the crown of your head uh, to the soles of your feet. Eat up on the inside out uh, and the outside in uh, I decree the decree of God Almighty over your life uh, and I call you healed uh, in Jesus name bless God the offering and the gifts of your people I thank you God uh, Every prayer request, uh, every prayer request I bring on to this anointing, I bring it to God most able. Uh, I bring it to God, hallelujah. And I speak in this prophetic anointing uh, in the name of Jesus uh, that all that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm uh, and the locust swarm, uh, all the enemy has been doing to frustrate the purposes of God uh, and to cause you to lose faith uh, and to cause you to lose trust uh, and confidence confidence in God it is not going to work because God is not a man that he shall lie I knock today in the name of Jesus Christ I ask again today in the name of Jesus Christ and I seek again today in the name of Jesus Christ in your behalf pertaining to your needs and your problems your situation your daughter-in-law your grandchildren your son-in-law for husbands and wives in every area and every capacity uh, I leave no stone unturned uh, every medical bill you have to pay uh, every college tuition uh, whatever it is you need for your children uh, I touch and agree with God uh, I come boldly before his throne of grace uh, and I petition God uh, on behalf of this noonday service uh, I petition God uh, in your behalf uh, those that have left uh, and those who wanted to be here but couldn't be here. Uh, I bring the whole of the care, uh, even those that are traveling and now living uh, in different states, uh, in North and South Carolina, in Georgia and Florida, in California, in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, those that have moved upstate New York. Father, every prayer request uh, that has been directed to this house, uh, I bring it to you today, uh, and I ask you to turn things around. Uh, you you are a way maker, you are a miracle worker, you are promise keeper, you are problem solver, you are light in the darkness. Everything that is troubling you for the cat and the dog, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, everything on the job, everything in life, I bring it all to God. And I ask you to fix it, God. And I ask you to beat back the forces of darkness. Father, I ask you to perform your word where you said the words of a slanderer will not be established in the earth. I thank you now, God, for blessing, for healing and delivering. 
and for making the way of your people perfect. I thank you, God, that they're all leaving this sanctuary with hearing ears and seeing eyes and spirits that are anointed to hear. However, you're going to speak the eyes of their understanding is enlightened. They're no longer walking in spiritual ignorance. But most importantly, God, they're filled with the power of your spirit and their men and women of divine authority. They shall decree a thing and you shall establish it. Father, there's anything that I fail to ask for your people. I ask you to grant it in your love and your mercy because we need it. We need the blessing. We need your salvation. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and success and prosperity and victory and healing and deliverance and miracles and breakthrough and blessings both now and forevermore. For God said to Moses, in this way, when my name is invoked upon my people, they shall be blessed. And so you are blessed today because I've invoked the name Yahweh. I've invoked the name Jehovah. I've invoked the name Jehovah Jireh. I have invoked the, invoked the name Jehovah Roy because the Lord is your shepherd, your supplier, your bringer, your source, your sustainer, your giver, your helper. You shall lack nothing. I've invoked the name of Jehovah to obey the good God. I've invoked the name of Jehovah you call God most able. I've invoked the name of Jehovah Palatai, the Lord your deliverer. I've invoked the name of Elimuna. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. I've invoked the name of Elimeth, the God of truth. I've invoked the name of Jesus. He's your salvation. I've invoked the name of the Lord your God. Jehovah Nissi, your banner. Adonai, your Lord and God. I've invoked the name of Yeshua, Yeshua Thalatai, the God of your salvation upon your life. I bless you today by the leading of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Father, Jehovah, the Son, Yeshua, and the Spirit, the Ruach of God, and she or he whom God has blessed. No man can curse. You're blessed. You're going out and coming in. You're rising and down sitting uh, and the works of your hands uh, are also blessed. Uh, God bless you. See you next Wednesday. It's prayer.